and welcome to This is Metal. And um, we're going to welcome our uh, first guest since uh, Tom Collier has become a new co-host of the show, um, Zero King lead singer, Andy Hout. Welcome to the show, Andy. I think this is the third time I've interviewed you. Um, and so it's great to have you back. You're a mutual friend of me and Tom. Um, I got to tell you, um, I don't know what it is, but since we announced Tom as our new co-host, um, every time we post something on the Facebook page, it gets it's get, getting a lot more um, attention than what we were getting before. Um, so I think it's because we have an artist like you come on. So so thanks for that. Um, Ooh, thanks for having me. So uh, what, what's going on with Zero King right now? I, I see you guys are doing a lot of um, a lot of shows, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, we're playing a lot of shows. Uh, we're gonna be back up in Detroit uh, next Friday at the Token. And uh, at uh, Music Factory in Battle Creek, Michigan, on Saturday, August twelfth. So uh, that's next weekend. And then uh, I think at the end of the month, we're in Fort Wayne again. So yeah, we're playing a lot of there. shows. Uh, we're we're getting ready to start writing again. Okay. Um, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, towards a new project. So. And so um, you guys are op you're opening band on those shows, or? Um, it's not. Yeah, it's not a headlining situation. It's just we're kind of usually in the middle. That's of the cool. lineup, which oh, is fine. Oh. That's that's where we want to be right yeah. now. That's cool. Um, I mean, that way, you know, the locals kind of anchor it. Of course, the ultimate goal you want to one day be, be in that headlining uh, position. But let me ask you, what's it like to to be in the position? You are that opening band, so uh, when people are coming to see you guys play perform in concert, you know, you're the first band or the second band up. You're getting you know, uh, the the crowd warmed up. What's that like? Um, I mean, it's a challenge because you got to get their attention. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you got to drag, you got to pull them into the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause you know, they they've got the band in and you know, that they've come to see Yeah. Uh, in most cases, you know, whether it's their friend's band or whether they're a fan yeah, of the yeah, band yeah. Or, or what, whatever it is. And, yeah. uh, and you've got to, you've got to a catch their attention and B bring them into the show and, and make them have a good time and make them remember your band and hopefully go buy some merch and, yeah you know get uh follow you on social media so that way you know the next time you're in their area sure um they'll come see you and, and do, you, do you get a chance to get outside of your local area much or as far as oh yeah yeah i mean see we're based in west virginia um yeah. well yeah. west virginia kentucky and ohio and uh usually when we go play it is somewhere outside of those areas uh whether it's michigan indiana pennsylvania tennessee um uh, you know is that just we don't get a from? chance to like necessarily tour because we're yeah. still kind of you know doing the weekend warrior thing yeah. and maybe that'll change at some point you know well, hey, as we as we build things up the fact that you got people coming out that's that's a good thing anytime now let me ask you um as far as your local area there um, in west virginia is there much of a rock scene there or what's that like? not a whole lot yeah. um i mean you know you have your occasional uh you know big bands will come through and play the civic center and stuff like that and then there's you know there's local bands um playing little bars you know yeah. uh there's no like really out outside of maybe one or two in this area uh venues that are like bigger so, venues. Yeah. You know? that right there tells me you're kind of worth your you guy your band uh, worth some salt because the fact that you're not just in your local area and, and you're getting these gigs that's that's a good thing that, that, that tells you that um you, you've got a fan base you got a presence people yeah come into the show so that that's a good thing i was looking on your facebook page andy and i, I noticed um or the post where you said something about, um, "Hey, if you got my guitars, please return them." What, what, was your were your guitars stolen recently? Or? No, no, no. That actually wasn't anything to do with our band. I was just helping out a friend. Oh, okay. Uh, Interesting. Apparently, yeah. their 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 house got robbed. Wow! Wow! Yeah. And some of those and some of their guitars got taken. That's so. awful because you know we we are a working uh, a working musician and um, you know even the equipment. I mean, um, the guitars, the drumsticks, everything. Um, that's expensive and to have any of that uh that's stolen that's just a shame that people are doing that yeah yeah luckily i think that actually happened in ohio um it didn't actually happen here it happened yeah. uh mansfield ohio i believe i love that you know looking out for your fellow musicians you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know if i can help get the word out on something like that or conversely if i can help somebody else promote their show and yeah. uh, in their area and, and get people to you know go to that show and and support the artists you know, sure. we try and, to do as I much of that as we can also, too um maybe a lot of people don't know this about you know i just kind of discovered it going on your facebook page that you're also a digital creator so what exactly is that i mean i, I say when i like to design web design and stuff like that 
Um, I mean, I, I didn't, I don't think I selected that. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think that's just something Facebook put on there. I mean, I guess as a band, we're, we're digital creators, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we have done, um, lyric videos and things like that in house. Um, our guitar player, Shane handles stuff like that. Well, I love that. That's interesting that, um, you didn't even put that up yourself. Facebook kind of brands you as that for whatever reason. They, they, yeah. For whatever reason. <laughs> zero king it's a band hello <laughs> yeah i mean that may be because we do like facebook lives and things like that yeah, yeah. okay uh, so I, I i assume that's why it wow i think there's different yeah. facebook's always changing um yeah. you know all their features are always changing so it's 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 tough to keep up with what they're yeah, i mean it, it's interesting because facebook itself has changed so much over the years it started out as a place for um everybody to just initially just you know kind of share your pictures of when you were growing up and what you're doing now to reconnect with old family members or friends that you haven't seen in years or people you went to school with and then it mm -hmm. kind of got into people realizing hey i can have a profile i can kind of you know if i'm in a band or if i'm a i'm doing this i can kind of advertise what i'm doing and 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 get the word out that way and a lot of people have been successful doing that. and then you have like during covid um i'm all the lockdowns i was really impressed when bands started having these online events but then Facebook immediately is like, okay, if you guys are going to do these events on Facebook, we got to get a piece of it all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We did that for a while. Um, there was a couple of times where we, uh, we, we, we just kind of got together and practiced and filmed it and sort of put on little shows, you know, um, on Facebook live so that people would have something to watch. <laughs> and, and our first couple were pretty successful, but I think, uh, I think after a month or so it, it got kind of, uh, saturated. I, I, I dug it for a while because the, the thing is, like, um, a band like Zero King, when, when um, you know, you make your money basically by uh, not, not so much sell, uh, CD sales, because, I mean, you make a little money that way, but it's mostly people coming out to the shows, buying the merchandise. And so when you have all these lockdowns and, uh, you know, the main crust of how you make your money is no longer feasible at that point in time. And there was a point in time where you maybe thought, I don't know if we're ever going to, are we going to ever be able to do live shows again? You got to kind of think yeah. on your feet. And, and, and I, I thought for some of these bands that did that, hey, pretty inventive, you know, of, of creating a new way, a new revenue or a new way to kind of still connect with your fans. Um, oh, it looks like Tom is going to be able to join us. So, awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. How, how cool is that? Uh, yeah. So our, our host, Tom, our, our co-host, Tom Collier, he was, um, He's a little late because um, he was caught in traffic where Tom lives. And he lives where there's all this um, farm equipment. He got stuck uh, behind some farm equipment. Um, he said it was going about 10 miles an hour. So looks like he's <laughs> he's hopping on. So that, that, that'll that be fun. But um, yeah, and, and um, so so that's cool, Andy, that, that you were able to find a way during all the lockdowns to kind of, um, you know, stay busy. I dig that, you know, where I live, you know. I, I one thing I always love doing is going to the movies and stuff like that. I couldn't believe we were living in a time where you couldn't even go to a movie theater. Where I live down the street, there's a little club, and they had like a movie night. Well, okay, we're, we're going to show um, Fast Times at Richmond High and and Caddyshack. It was like a double feature, and mm -hmm. they get in in the parking lot. I thought, what a new hey Tom. Hey, I'm in it, guys. Sorry, man. Sorry, I'm late. I'm here though. What I'm timing. Made. We were just kind of <laughs> hey Tom. Andy. We're kind of just introducing Andy, and so. Um, this is a great place to pick up. So I guess um, let's talk a little bit, Andy, about your video for the song Back Off. We talked about that yeah. last time I interviewed you. And I dug the fact that you really, it was cool that you included martial art people in that. And, and I think it's a cool way for martial, people, martial arts people maybe to get into a band like Zero King. Yeah, was, yeah. We, we definitely hope for some uh, from a crossover there. Yeah, yeah. So um, so uh, you guys um, you guys are pretty much, you told me, um, starting work on a new album where are you with that i mean do you have material left from the previous album or are you starting fresh well we we always have a bank of songs that we can kind of go back to um and and kind of see if we can uh and, and ship you know whip uh -huh. them into shape to get them on a on a new new release um and we're doing that with a couple songs that uh kind of go back a ways with our with our band history but we're also really excited about writing some brand new stuff um, we've been playing so much lately, and um, our drummer, he uh, he works out of town a lot. So uh, he's a union pipe fitter. Oh wow! And, and so he gets he gets uh, you know assigned different places, but he'll always make it back to to play shows or 
Cool. You know, if we if we can schedule a rehearsal or something like that. Um, so so we're looking forward to kind of hunkering down this fall and kind of maybe pulling back a little bit on the shows. We we promoted this record for eh, you know a good eight months or so. Oh, there you and, go. And uh, not not that we're going to stop promoting the record because yeah. I've I've still got press and things like that I'm doing and and if we get uh, if we get some good opportunities we're going to take them. Um, well, I, I think but, Tom Tom is very much like you. I know with his last his man's last two releases, they pretty much um, you know didn't come out that far apart, you know, from one another because uh, and, and yet like the latest album they put out, uh, which I got right here, Great American Rock, great album. I mm -hmm. urge people to go out and get this, but um, you know they had like four or five songs that were nominated for Grammys, you know, and and I, I think um, you guys are very um, keen on you know we don't want people to forget about who we are, you know, we want to kind of. Uh, you know, keep pumping out the music while while we got the opportunity to do do it. Well, yeah, good. I, I want to bring Andy's band down to New York to bring them up to New York and do a show with Zero King, Hell Hostage. Uh, we, we've talked about that, and we'll definitely do something like that too. Yeah. I'm really yeah. happy. Yeah. I, I've listened to some of your older stuff too, man. I'm pretty uh, pretty impressed with it. I went back into your bad catalog, Kings of cool. Destruction. Thank you, Kings of Destruction, 2012. Yeah, some, Kings of Self Destruction. Self Destruction. Yeah. Yes, there were some cool tunes on that. I really enjoyed that. I, are you going to re-release any of that stuff? I mean, that's like, you know, 12 years old now. I don't know. <laughs> just, just <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I mean, it is almost 12 years old. Stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I think we might take some songs from some of those releases that we feel like, you know, maybe didn't get the the attention. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to necessarily redo them, but we might uh, remix, remaster them, maybe bring them up to, you know, modern, modern sounds. Yep. We'll yep. see. Yeah, you know, it's an option. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. You know, I don't I don't know. Thing, so. yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. Start. I was gonna say I, I interviewed this um this band Love and Warren. The the singer was telling me that um because they got they got two albums they put out. And he said you we kind of did a re-release of like it made it a double C D. So um the, the newer fans are aware of what we're doing now, but they, they didn't realize there was an album that came before. And so like like that's a possibility of maybe repackaging in it and people could buy both albums, you know. Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, Empire of Sin, it came out during the the pandemic. We basically right. released it in February of 2020. Um, so it really, outside of digital, wasn't a whole lot of way to, it, there wasn't a whole lot uh, of things we could do to pr promote that release. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it, it's almost sort of like the forgotten album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that happened with our Epic album. So here's what we did is our record label is actually taking the best off Epic and the best off Great American Rock we're doing a vinyl yeah you know oh that's that's cool and we're doing a vinyl version of it because i mean both those albums sold very good but ours released in january of 2020 and uh all of a sudden the whole world shut down you know march 1st and uh, it yeah. did well for us but not as good as we thought it would have yeah. and um uh, and now it's selling even better but i'm just i'm throwing some ideas out to you guys that's yeah, yeah. All, you know, yeah i appreciate that thank you that's why i love this uh having two musicians kind of talk and shop you know um, <laughs> yeah that's great so andy let me ask you a question um everybody knows of course you're the you're a lead singer of zero king um what do you think uh, most of something most of your fans don't know about andy hat how it would surprise them you know it could be anything it could be you know, a, a side job you have or um, just something in everyday life yeah i mean i i guess as far as side job uh the the job that that keeps me you know from 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 being broke um when i'm not playing shows and out on the road uh, i'm a grub hub driver I deliver okay. food. Um, so I guess that that's something. Um, I don't know. things. Other things people might not know about me. I actually started out uh, on piano. That, wow, was my wow. first, yeah. that was my first in instrument when I, was a, when I was a kid, around, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years old. Well, you're in good company because, you know, I mean, look, look, at, look at the great, um, you know, guitar god, um, Eddie Van Halen. He started out on the drums before he was ever a guitar player. There, I, yeah. I know the very first thing he did was the piano, but... My point is, um, a lot of people may not even have heard the story that Alex was originally the guitar player and Eddie was originally the drummer. And it was actually Alex that said, "Hey Ed, I think you, you're a little better of a uh, guitar player than I am." So what? So they switched, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even you look at some a lot of guys are both play instrument. Absolutely. I'm like, I I started on drums myself too, and then went to guitar and vocals. You know? Interesting. Interesting. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you play with any other bands, Andy? Is this your main band, Zero King? A lot of my friends. Yeah, I actually don't have any other projects right now. Um, there's been some times where I've put together like little cover bands and things like that that, uh, yeah, maybe never got off the ground. But um, 
you know, and 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 then I I uh, there's different musicians I'll I'll collaborate with from time to time. And, and you know, you know Andy, might... let's talk a little bit about your, your tell me your day job. I guess you you, you deliver food. Um, and where exactly do you deliver food? Did you were saying to the people that um, just to different stores or where? No, no, it's Grubhub. Oh, okay. Grubhub. It's uh, it, yeah, it basically they get on the app and I drive there to the I go to the restaurant, pick it up, and drive. Yeah, it to their yeah, house. okay, yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a popular thing, especially since um, COVID. But you know, I I love hearing stuff like that because you're like, oh well, you know, I don't know, people really care, but but it, it's interesting because it shows people, um, you're more than just um this this rock guy. There's a little more to your story, and, and and I think that's cool because um, you know what? There's no there's no um reason to be ashamed. I mean, we all we all have to earn a living, you know, and it's yeah. cool that you can do the, the thing that helps to pay the bills. And, and of course, doing the Zero King thing helps pay. You're probably not making as much money, let's be honest, as you're doing at your day job. But that's cool, too, because you get a chance to to do what you have to make to pay the bills. And then you're kind of living out your rock and roll dream, you know, doing doing the weekend gig thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Grubhub or DoorDash or whatever allows you when you need to. Uh, you don't have to stick to a schedule or a musician. That's a great certain number, number of hours. It's it, you're your own boss, basically. So and being, being a musician as you are having these shows come up, that's a great type of job that you can just kind of schedule when you need extra money. Yeah. You know? And even yeah, with high end musicians, even with high end musicians, I've got friends that are out there working full time jobs and then they go out on tour to Europe and they come back and they work a job. Even myself, I'm a real estate broker. Right. Very, my job is very flexible. I can leave for a month. I can sell a house from my phone, you know, yeah. in today's technology. So it's very common for musicians that people think are multi-gazillionaires and they're touring the world. But when they come back, they go back to their day job. It's, it's just normal. Sure, yeah. The world's changed since, you know, the 80s, back in the 80s, they threw money at us. Record yeah. company. Yeah. My first record deal, Atlantic Records threw me $10,000 before they even heard one of my songs. We went and partied it up. They got four songs out of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had we were you know we were twenty five year old kids. We run in limousines. We had girls. We was partying, you know. And we said we said Jesus Christ, we're down to three thousand dollars. We better go, we better go in the studio and give them something. And we, yeah. I, I learned something new about you. Well, um, you you really yeah, got well, right now, Tom, because not only did you have a a, a record deal in the eighties, but man, you were signed to the same label. And this is no lie, as a Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. Way to go, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we parted our way off the label because we were young kids. Oh, yeah. We didn't know him. We thought we were Motley Crue. We weren't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. You know, we thought we, we were millionaires for that 10 grand. I'd love to see, right, those, yeah. see, those, I'd love to see those pictures. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We had to burn them. <laughs> it, was cra- it was a crazy time. Believe me, the studio and, was nuts. And you know, Tom, uh, you. I want to explain to people why you kind of just jumped on because of. Uh, I was telling Andy off there, but it, it's kind of funny in doing shows like this. Um, sometimes things come up, and you were sharing with me, which I didn't realize at the time. Hey, uh, I might be able to make the show or not. I'm not sure because I'm caught in traffic. I, you said where I live is a bunch of farmland. So, I mean, again, that's just how different where you live and I live it, it is. I mean, I, I get caught in traffic from time to time on the freeway, but man, getting stuck buying farm equipment, I go, that, that's quite a different experience. Well, it was yeah. a hay wagon, a, a tractor pulling a hay down the main <laughs> highway. And everybody was behind it, so nobody could get around. Is you know what I mean? I'm going, oh no! <laughs> That's why I was I was almost at a stop when I was texting you. I was going, to, you know, I'll be there, but finally yeah. I cut off on a back road and got over here. You know, I it's funny how these things happen because you know um, when I was doing the very last show with the previous uh, co-host. I mean, uh, that's the only time in the history of me and him doing the show where we ever had any like really technical difficulties, and all of a sudden he's having trouble getting his his internet connection. So. So we kind of have to do it the old school way. I, I I remain, you know, on the Zoom and he's he's calling me and we're kind of talking through a cell phone. And it's, it, it was kind of fun in a way because it, uh, it's kind of something unexpected. And you got to kind of figure out, okay, so do we try to carry on or not? And you know what? It, it ended up being cool anyway, just like this. <laughs> yeah. Just adapt to it. You just got to adapt. That's all. Yeah. Kind of keep on rolling. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so Andy, uh, you think there'll be any more videos from... Uh, the current album or you think it's mostly working on new songs I, you know i don't know um we've talked about some videos uh some more videos but we might actually just uh kind of pivot and yeah. you know do um do a, a video for the next project and kind of get a a single and a video out for that yeah and um, so it, you i, I think that might the, be the way we go with it honestly 
I do in the modern ways um, where you might release a couple more singles before the al album's actually out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's funny, like one of my favorite bands from the last uh, decade, the Dead Daisies, like, um, like the last couple of releases they put out, it seems like by the time the album gets released, every song has been released as a single, but hey, you know, everybody's still checking it out, you know? Yeah, I'll be excited to see what they do with Karabi again, because I, I really like the Karabi. I mean, I like I like Glenn Hughes a lot. He's a great singer, but Karabi just, uh, he yeah. fits that band really well, I, I think. I got you, I got you, yeah. Um, John Karabi just cannot be wrong, wrong with, um, I, I'd be honest, like a lot of people, um, I discovered him when he first joined Motley Crue, and I, I followed him ever since. And and John Karabi is one of those guys, I can tell you that, um, I don't even have to hear the album, I just know I'm going to love it, It's you know because Karabi's got that kind of um, talent. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great songwriter, great singer, amazing in fact, performer. In fact, um, one of um, the previous host, Joe Lawson, and I, we did an episode on Motley Crue. Um, and and he kind of went off because uh, at the time, Nikki Six had given an interview where he's talking about the Krabi album. He's like, and, you know, at the time that the album came out, you know, you know, in 94, Nikki was really talking about the album. But years later, he's like, well, you know, the Krabi album, now, yeah, I don't know if I really dig it, you know, because I had to struggle. You know, I had to teach Karabi how to write a song. And we're like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want <laughs> proof that Karabi could write songs, go back and listen to that Scream album. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. actually a nice guy, too. I met him out in California when I played the Metal Hall. Karabi was backstage there and talked to her. He's just friendly as could be, talking with everybody, just you would, normal, normal, normal person like everybody else. Yeah, you know, yeah. really and, cool. and, he, and, he, and let's talk about John Karabi a little more because you know how, uh, besides his obvious talent, I mean, he is currently back with the Dead Daisies, as we said. And he's still out on that tour with um, Tom Keeper doing solo dates. So he's doing both at the same time. That's just amazing. <laughs> when he's yeah. not doing that, he's a truck driver. You know that. He's yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I read his that. book. <laughs> I did not know that until I read his book. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So that tells you, a lot of us musicians, we have to you have to supplement your income in these days. Yeah. And, and you know, and to talking to you about Krabi while we are, I mean, another thing, um, I remember the brief time he was in Rat, and, and I could not understand at the time now, what's he doing? What's he? I, I love Rat. Don't get me wrong, but like, what's he doing in Rat as the rhythm guitar player? He's a great singer, but you read the book and you come to realize, uh, you know, at the time, uh, it, it makes sense because he, uh, he was in a position where, got it, got. I want to still be able to play out. I want to be able to pay the bills. You do what you have to. So you know, and, and, and that's another thing I've come to respect about the guy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I kind of have my own theory about the about Motley Crue and that self-titled record. I, I really believe because if you read the interviews at the time, you know, all the press they were doing around that record, it was the music they wanted to make. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like when the world didn't accept it and they had to get Vince back, yeah. I feel like, you know, some of their spark kind of died. Um, okay. Not saying they didn't. Well, I mean, in a way, that was sort of the last real like band album that they yeah. actually wrote, because after that, you had DJ Ashba coming in, you had James Michael coming in, you had all these different songwriters. Yeah, at the time, but but yeah, now we know all this stuff. Yeah, we did then. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like they that was the music they really wanted, the statement they really wanted to make at the time, and then when they yeah, weren't allowed to do that, more I or still less. I love that Molly album to this day. I've never changed my view on it just because it wasn't. Um, popular now here's the thing i think why a lot of there was a backlash not because karabi is a, a a bad singer but but a lot of people they let's be honest with it just like when you think of van halen you think of david lee roth as great of a singer sammy Hick. people think of vince neal's um and i i think where they made the real big mistake is mickey six at the time wanted to make the bold statement well we're calling this motley crew because this is motley crew <laughs> and yeah. he's been admitted since that maybe that was a mistake you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, because people people didn't associate that sound with Motley Crue, even though I think they they are capable of doing more sure. than they do. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not saying I don't like Saints of Los Angeles. I will say I don't really like Generation Swine or um, yeah, yeah. what was the re record they after that? The They're trying to be Nine Inch Nails or something, but they really weren't, you know? Um, yeah, Swine's, Swine's a weird record, man. It's it's all over the place. And now now it's come out that Mick didn't really play on that album. Maybe just a couple couple solos, if, if anything at all. And um, yeah. I'm real excited because supposedly they even record. I'm not sure what if it's for an all new album or what, but they've recorded, um, you know, a couple new tracks that Bob Rock produced. Them. 
interested to see where that ends up and what it sounds like. Um, I got nothing against John Five. I'll check it out. You know, um, I think he's a great songwriter, great guitar player. Look at all the people he's um, played with. Um, sure. You know, Andy, another thing you and Tom have in common is you guys are both um, singers. You're both guitar players and great songwriters. So I'd like to ask you, um, this is a silly question maybe, but, but do you think of yourself more as a guitar player, more of a singer? Like, I guess what I'm asking, did you start out as a guitar player and you just kind of sang because you were the guy who'd have the best voice in the band? How did that happen? Um, so as far as singing, that's something I've always done, um, even as a young age, you know, doing um, solos in, in church or, you know, in school plays and things like that. Um, the guitar is something that I, I definitely developed a love for in my teenage years and, um, you know, picked up guitar and I still play guitar. I just don't play guitar on stage. Okay. Um, so I, I do write on guitar and things like that. There, you know, <laughs> there are songs on these records that, <laughs> that are my guitar riffs or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely more of a, a singer front man. Oh, great, um, great. Yeah. And then I think I'm, you know, I, I think I'm a little more well-rounded as a musician yeah. than that. But as far as a performer goes, definitely, uh, you know, the, the front man singer kind of thing. Yeah, I yeah. never really wanted to be like my first couple of bands. I did play guitar and sing and um, I didn't have as much fun as when I was just being a lead singer. Kind of more free. Because, you you know, you're stu you're stuck of... behind a microphone yeah. stand and things like that. You know, you think for you, it's kind of more free to, um, not have that guitar in your hand you can run a little more free on stage kind of do that absolutely i can get in people's faces you know what i'm saying i can i can get the mic in their face and they'd be like hey help me sing this part or whatever you know and so because you are that front man and you are the um guy on stage that everybody's really looking at um how important is it for you to be able to communicate with the audience i mean is that something you work hard at or you just kind oh, of? oh absolutely yeah. absolutely i mean I, I try to like i said bring them in as much as as i can whether that's you know, hey, help me sing this next part or, you know, just give me some fist in the air and haze and things like that. Or, you know, sometimes you throw out a phrase and have them throw, you know, repeat it back to you or whatever. And yeah. How about you, Tom? Anything you want to ask Andy? Yeah. So who, who's the main songwriters in the band? Are you part of that songwriting team? Is it, is it like in my band, unfortunately, it's mainly me. But I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I'm part of it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the main songwriter. I would say the main songwriters are uh, Shane, our guitar player, and Chris, the drummer. And Chris actually probably writes about 85% of the lyrics. Okay. Um, now, the reason that works so well is because he was my drummer back in other bands, too. So we've known each other. That's the cool thing about our band right now. Collectively, we've all known each other at least 25 years, and in some cases, wow. like 30 Wow. So it's it's very much a family vibe right now with our lineup, and we love that. Um, as far as the re like I said, he he can write in my voice, so to speak. Um, he knows how I'm going to deliver something, um, and he writes things that he knows that I'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice, nice, nice. Because it's hard, you know, as me just being the only songwriter in the band. Act everything's my vision now at this point. So I just give it to everybody else. I record my, I got a 24 track in my home. I'll record everything myself and then give it to everybody. And like when Ripper sang with us, I say, here, don't sing like me now at this point. The second album, that's all Ripper take, I'll, I wrote all the vocals, but Ripper took what I had and just- Sure, you, you gave him a guide vocal or whatever, yes, yeah. The first and a lot of times Chris will do that too with the lyrics. He'll be like, I kind of have this idea and the melody kind of goes like this or whatever, but I know you're going to change it. You're going to adapt it to your style or whatnot. Um, and I think it's, I think it's really cool that our band is, is collaborative. Nice. Uh, it's not, it's not one guy coming in and saying, everybody play exactly this. <laughs> well, I give everybody the parts and I say, here, play them the way you guys want to, but I, I give the structure of the songs and they yeah. change too. They evolve. The music evolves. And stuff. Sure. It's yeah. great. You know, and going to rehearsal. That's why I was asking you who's, who's writing and sounds like everybody's basically writing in the band. Or yeah. Yeah. Writing. I'd say the only one who's not writing right now is Mike. And that's because he just joined in May, but okay. he will be. Yeah. I'm sure he will be. Player? Yeah. Nice. And, and, and I, I guess it kind of depends on what you're working on, of a project or the album, but um, because everybody in your guys' bands is a writer, um, have you ever thought about bringing in an outside writer, or do, or do you have that fear of it? If we bring in an outside writer, it's going to start to dilute the sound of the band. No, I, I mean, I think we'd be open to that, honestly. Yeah. I think, you know, if, if we found somebody that we were really comfortable with and, and, uh, it, could, it created a creative spark, you know. Yeah. Um, I think we'd we'd be up, you know, we'd be up for that. 
And I and both Andy and Tom, I got to say one thing I enjoy about um, what you guys do is as frontman and of your bands is that um, last time I was talking to you, Andy, for example, you're talking about we're talking about the fact that Quiet Riot was celebrating uh, 40 years of mental health, and and I think Kevin Dubrow was one of your influences. You have other influences, but like when I listen to Zero King. Like it does not necessarily sound like you're trying to sound like Kevin DeBro. Like I said, he's one, obviously he's one of many influences. But I guess my question is, how hard is that for when you guys like when you um, record a Zero King song? How hard is it to kind of create your own sound, your own thing? Because I think both you and Tom have accomplished that with your bands. That you know, I don't think anybody could accuse you of, of trying to be the next um, Black Crows or whatever. You, you know? No, you know, no. You're, you're I own think. Thing going. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm really comfortable in my own skin at this point. Um, when I go in to attack a song, I just kind of like, you know, I'll, I'm open to suggestion, of course, yeah. you know, from the producer or from my, my bandmates or, or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I think I think I just kind of come in and like, how would I sound on this? What would I do here? Yeah. You know, a lot of um, bands because I think I think all of those influences that I had yeah. all kind of collectively. Sure, sure. You know, the stew of of what I put out there. And sometimes those influences, they're not going to come out in sound. Sometimes they're you know, melodic choices or or the way somebody delivers a note or it's something crazy. like that. Because I do have, I think I have a unique voice, yeah. um, you know, that doesn't it necessarily works. sound, that doesn't necessarily sound like other singers out there. So, yeah, that's a, that's a hard thing, I think, for bands to capture because there's nothing wrong with sounding like, um, you know, your heroes or who influenced you. Um, but but so many bands have that um, issue of hey you you sound like uh, you sound like Guns N' Roses you sound like Motley Crue you sound like Bon Jovi whatever the case may be whereas I yeah. listen to Zero King I listen to Hell Hostage you guys definitely have each band kind of has their own sound like I yeah I, I think we we I think our earlier stuff like not necessarily the Zero King stuff but other bands that I've been in and things like that probably were more derivative because that's you know um, I was younger so I was emulating. Well, my right too. Or whatever. Yeah. So, so I would, so I, I might sound like James Hetfield on a track, or I might yeah, try to sound right like Ozzy on the track, or whatever. When I, was... like, when I listen to Zero King or Held Hostage, um, I can hear like you guys are influenced by hard rock stuff, but you, you got your own sound, and I think that's kind of why you guys have the fan base you do, and it's it's ongoing and it's continuing to grow. And I think that's why yeah, you... and it's still growing. That's the cool thing. It's like you think about your numbers, and then you think, well, there's still. 300 more, mo you know, more million people just in the U S alone. And then how many more millions around the world or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you're, you can always reach new audiences and, and new listeners and new fans. Especially in the case of zero King, you're, you're kind of still developing your sound. So on this new album, you may, you know, that might be the signature album. Who knows? You just don't know. And it could very well be. And, and you don't know. And what's cool about that is when you go on to record the next set of songs, um, you kind of, it sounds like you're a type of guy who just go in and we're going to record and it comes out how it comes out, you know? Well, I, th to a point, we, we do do quite a bit of um, pre-production. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we rehearse the songs. We usually try to demo them out in some kind of rough fashion um, to decide whether or not, you know, we want to change this part or that part or, um, you know, and then I usually have some kind of idea as far as, the vocal arrangements and things like that, because I'm not averse to using the guys in my band to sing on the tracks, but a lot of times it's just easier if I, you know, go in there and nail the harmonies or whatever, because I've got them in my head or sometimes I don't come up with them until almost the session, or, you know, I might lay down the lead vocal and then take it home for a week and play around with it and come up with my ideas. I kind of mapped out. I guess the point I'm trying to make is like when, when there's a said box, you know, like Metallica at one point uh, would never thought of recording a ballad or a pop song. That's not necessarily the case anymore. But but again, I think it's cool when a band kind of goes outside its comfort zone and, OK, we're going to give you a little something different, you know. Yeah, I think we've done that on all three records, honestly. Um, I think that we're, there really is no said box, rules yeah. as far. Yeah, there's no there's no box that we're stuck in or anything like that. We have our we have our sound. But yeah. it's almost like no matter what we play, it's going to come out sounding like us because, you know, the core of the band it's has been around a long time, yeah. almost 20 years at this point. Yeah. Well, um, it's really great talking to you again, Andy. Before we wrap it up, Tom, anything else you want to um, say? No, just good luck with the new album. I'm looking forward to hearing it. I think you guys do yeah. a good job. And I, I yeah, let's, let's keep in touch for sure. Absolutely. You come to New York, we're going to do a show with you guys. That and, sounds and, great. And Andy, yeah, let's definitely keep in touch because um, me and Tom um, – 
there's no rule that says we can't have you back on the show. We'd love to have you back anytime you got anything to promote. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Jason. Yeah. Thanks for doing the show tonight. This, this oh, should be good. It was great hanging with you guys, man. Week and a half. We'll let you know once it gets posted. Take care, my friend. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you.